Church. Um, this morning we're looking at uh, Genesis chapters 33 and 35, and uh, we'll be looking at some incidents that take place um, in those chapters, and we'll be seeing um, what can be taken from those incidents and what they reveal about the people involved in them, and what they reveal about what God can do. So, um, chapter 33 that's uh it happens immediately after Jacob has crossed is about to cross the river to meet with his brother Esau God's told him to go back and see Esau Jacob is terrified because he knows that Esau has every right to take revenge on him he deprived him of his birthright he deceived him and he left the area and he was he knows that he's a deceiver he was a manipulator and J- and Esau met the worst of that and He's already, Jacob has already said to God, I won't let go unless you bless me. And God does bless him. And God has also wrestled with Jacob and had put his leg out of joint. It's a very famous story. Jacob crosses the river and it says in chapter 33, Jacob is approaching Esau, probably terrified. And there's mirrors of the prodigal son story in here. It says, he himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother Esau. Jacob's scared. He's scared of seeing his brother, scared of how his brother will react, and he bows down. But get this, in verse 4, the prodigal son's story, very similar, Esau, who has every right to be offended by Jacob, runs out to meet him. It says in verse 4, but Esau ran to meet Jacob, and he embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Esau runs out to meet his trickster, deceiving, manipulative brother, and he embraces him. Complete forgiveness, total grace. This is probably the one thing that Jacob did not expect as he crossed over the river. But God has gone ahead of him. God has gone ahead of him and given him tremendous grace. And his brother runs out to meet with him. He embraces him, throws his arm around his neck and kissed him. And this is after a family feud that's gone on for years. What amazing grace. He then goes on to say in verse 10. Jacob says, if I found favour in your eyes, accept this gift from me, the gift of some of his household. He says, For to see your face is like seeing the face of God now that you've received me favourably. He is recognising in Esau's face the face of forgiveness, the face of grace. He says, for God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. He is talking about his household. He is acknowledging that God has been gracious to him all the way through his time away from Esau. He achieved a lot of things by by being deceptive and being manipulative, but he he acknowledges God has been gracious to him. Then a little bit later on, um, Jacob, Esau invites him to come back with um, him, but Jacob chooses instead to uh, go on to the city of Shechem. And it says there that for a hundred pieces of silver, this is in verse 19, for a hundred pieces of silver, he brought from the sons of Hymor, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he pitched his tent. And there, what does he do? He sets up an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. First thing he does after meeting with Esau is he sets up an altar to worship. He puts a place there that can be a focus for the worship of God. After God has given him grace with his brother, he acknowledges the father. And names it El Elohi Israel. There's an incident then that takes place in chapter 30, 34, uh, which causes trouble amongst the locals. It's, it's a bit of a nasty little incident, but uh, it explains why God then gives him a further direction. Um, and it's called Jacob returns to Bethel. God says to him, go up to Bethel, settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you. We were fleeing from your brother Esau. And the interesting part here 
is that Jacob gives a very clear instruction to his household. It's not an instruction that he's been given by God. Unless, of course, it is not included here. But he says, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves. Change your clothes. Then let us go to Bethel and I'll build an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who's been with me wherever I've gone. He's showing further and further commitment to God who's blessed him. God is about to rescue him out of a difficult situation with some locals. And his response is, get rid of the foreign gods. Get rid of the idols. Get rid of the things that distract you from God. Purify yourselves. Change your clothing. Make yourselves new, fresh, clean, holy. And let's go before God in Bethel, where he's told me to go. And it further says, they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had. And the rings in their ears. And Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. They're saying goodbye to what they knew before. Goodbye to the old man. And they set out and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them so that no one pursued them. No locals pursued him after he was in trouble there. No locals pursued him. So as he was making this commitment to God, going up towards Bethel to set up a place of worship, God has kept him safe. God has kept his covenant with him. And the terror of God has fallen on the locals so that none of them pursued him. This shows that when we make our commitment to God, when we go out in his purposes, he backs us up and he goes with us. He carries us and watches over us. Let's pray for today as we think about these things. Father God, thank you that you are so entirely faithful in your promises. Thank you, Lord, that when we commit ourselves to you, and to your purposes and your plans, and to seek you and commit our way to you. When we worship you, when we look to honour you as Jacob did, Father God, you meet with us more than we can ever expect or ask or expect to receive. That Lord, here Jacob found tremendous forgiveness and mercy and grace with Esau, and then God protected him in the midst of a trouble that he didn't cause. God commands him to move on and God protects him and his household. Father, thank you, Lord, that you are a God who protects. You're a God who watches over your people. You watch over those who are committed to you. You watch over your children. You watch over us, your people and your church. Thank you, Father, we come under your holy, divine and amazing protection. In the name of Jesus. Amen.